okay, you'll see uh, an energy invitation that su suddenly appears in the stomach area, especially on an empty stomach, okay? Right. Don't take aspirin on an empty stomach. Right. Yet it's a very, very useful um, agent. And it's been used by householders, uh, ordinary people, for uh, you know, the last uh, over half century, probably longer. Um, but if you put just an aspirin near the energy of a cat, a feline, not, do not get the cat to eat the aspirin, okay? Just get it near the energy of a cat. The energy of the cat goes haywire. Cats cannot tolerate salicylic acid. Uh, if they ingest it, it will kill them. So if you ever think you've got, your cat's got a headache, don't give it aspirin. Yeah. You go to your veterinary practitioner and get the, the right thing it needs. Interesting. And you, hmm. have you watched That's just other, an example. What, yes. Um, have you by any chance watched any other um, chemical interactions in human beings with certain types of drugs, uh, whether they're I've legal had or to, illegal? Uh, with, uh, for example, um, I did yesterday in my presentation show a very distressing um, study, picture study, of a crack cocaine addict. I saw that. And that, mm. a 15-year-old girl, and this is just typical of what I've seen of this terrible, terrible affliction. I don't want to call it even an addiction and make it respectable. It's an affliction that's put on young people by most immoral means of, uh, uh, of base society. And um, it literally rips open their energy field, especially at the top of the head. There's Kundalini imbalance, which is at the base of the spine. Their sexual energy is completely disorientated. Their, their uh, brow chakras are opened and they will hallucinate, they will actually see things in those other dimensions, which of course are put down to uh, paranoid delusion and psychotic behavior by modern society. But they're actually being opened artificially to these other dimensions, and they don't have the mentality to understand what they're seeing. Uh, I had a 15-year-old, for example, who said, these voices tell me, uh, uh, Dr. Oldfield, that they are uh, uh, to kill my parents and to get their money so I can get more of my white rocks. And it was very, very, uh, um, well, disconcerting to me, but tragic to her family to be going through that experience. And they actually are opening to other beings, and you can see the other beings we as well. We have seen these attachments. Yes. We have seen these forms. Not around everyone uh, that we, shall we say, uh, who's been addicted to certain substances, but certainly the um, hallucinogenic uh, um, morphic uh, type uh, uh, drugs are profound for opening one up to those other levels. And once this is once this happens, what is the what do you see? Have you ever seen anything on a continued basis? Once the, where these beings are open to these other entities or attachments, what does it take then to repair the field from your observation? If they're cooperative, and this is not always the case, if they're still in the family unit, which is also not always the case. I've been successful in closing down these energy gaps, these energy rips, um, lesions, if you like, and sealing the energy field, controlling the abused substance under medical supervision, of course, um, with substitutes. Then we are able to call it a successful case. But the psychological damage uh, can be very, very much more long-lasting, mm -hmm. and to other family members too and to spouses and partners. Mm -hmm. And when you, l let's compare that for example, you had I believe a Rinpoche. Oh indeed, Lama Rinpoche, a Tibetan you, uh, priest. Let's talk about the differences and in And his aura. energy was so uh, magnificent. Um, uh, rainbow colored, bright, um, as opposed to dark and uh, sinister from the uh, 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 cocaine addicts. What has this taught you being able to view these kinds of images in real time, real life, and watch the unseen world happening I, I all just, day, every I, day? To me, every day is a privilege, you know. I thank God that I can still see. Thank God that I can still breathe this wonderful air he's given us, you know. I'm the kind of scientist who's, who's, who's before he shaves in front of the mirror, looks at himself and sees those nostrils, okay, if I may use that term, uh, and Thank God he gave me them, because I can breathe God's sweet air. That, uh, and there's just enough oxygen. It's amazing. There's just enough oxygen on the planet for us to, to sustain life. If there was any more oxygen, uh, if we lit a match and a fire started, we could never put it out. Mm -hmm. 
if there was too little oxygen, then we couldn't uh, sustain higher life like we've got here mm -hmm. now. I think that is absolutely fantastic. That balance is there. You have photographed some of the most incredible spots. Ah, and let's yes. talk about them a little bit. Some, some yeah. are well known and some are lesser known. I'd like you to Fantastic. talk a little bit about Bosnia. Uh, indeed. Okay. Uh, we were greatly pri privileged earlier this year to visit, uh, just outside of Sarajevo, uh, the Bosnian pyramids. And these are uh, ancient monuments that archaeologists are still debating, debating could still be uh, uh, actually older than the pyramids at Giza in Egypt and um, 10,000 years perhaps and uh, we were there with our uh, special video equipment and we were able to see the energies coming out the tops of these uh, pyramids um, we were also privileged there with our German colleagues uh, of the Sheriffham Institute and uh, Dr. Uh, Karen Targ, uh, to, she was doing experiments with her crystal skull from South America. And we were able to see the energy interaction between this very ancient artifact and an even more ancient artifact of the pyramid. And they, uh, you know, there were energy connections and it was absolutely fascinating. What did you see? What kind of, uh, kind of em uh, emanations were you seeing from the top of the well, pyramid? Well, we were seeing mount. jet streams going straight up into the atmosphere. We were seeing, uh, shall we say, flying anomalies that were moving in and around the pyramid. Look like interdimensional. They look interdimensional flying. UFOs, yeah, whatever exactly. you like to call them. I'm still analyzing the like. film data, mm -hmm. um, which was incredible. Because a lot of the UFO activity that happens around here is not necessarily within this dimension. I believe see, that is the case. People who are seers can see it. I sure. know with Stephen Greer's uh, group, they always have seers on board who will point out where they are and, and so forth. And they've uh, actually been caught on digital very, cameras right where it's been Very set. much so. And I believe also they're at such a high frequency that mm -hmm. to most of our human eyes, mm -hmm. they're cloaked mm -hmm. most of the time. Again, this is just a beautiful example of how your work is starting to bring that which has been under debate um, under much, much more uh, closer scrutiny on one level, but more acceptance on another. This, is a, this has been uh, the case, and it, what, we didn't go out to do this. It was accidental right. for, in these, uh, in these um, shall we say, these other flying anomalies right. that, um, that we were able to show them. Normally, I was looking at uh, uh, meridian and uh, chakra anomalies in people. That's what it all started with the human energy field, of course. Let's talk about crystals and the Indeed. human being and healing. And crystals in and of themselves, this is a big topic. And it's not just a woo-woo thing you sit in the middle of the table and admire. No, uh, they are energy dynamic. Uh, science uses them as energy transducers. There's one going off here in my watch, for example. Uh, in some of the camera equipment, there are crystal markers that uh, set beat frequencies for those electronics to, to, to work uh, in, a, in a balanced way, in a harmonic way. And all of us use crystals every day in these electronic objects. Um, however, crystals have been used in a more uh, ancient sense, in a healing sense. And the natural crystals that come out the ground have properties that affect the environment and properties that affect the human energy system.